Welcome to lesson 11. This video is the first code. It makes sense. I'm making like a mini series, right? Of each individual like part of what you need in order to create a sufficient edge, right? So this video, the first code is about how to create your thesis slash bias, how to basically revolve around your context of your lower time frame volume profile levels if you're using volume profile le levels like ledges or shelves, right? Like I do. Or you might use TPO levels. But what I mainly use TPO for is to look at previous balances and to create a narrative slash thesis, right, of a bias. And you're going to just make a feel of where price will go in terms of AMT logic. You always have to keep AMT in the back of your mind and also show you the codex that I've made. So first of all, what you need to know is what is a thesis slash bias, right? So a thesis is just when you form a conclusion on a market through various ways to expect where the market will move. And you trade based off that. So like, let's say you are long biased, right? You would only take the levels when when they are long levels, right? In your volume profiles. So like, let's say if price goes up and there's a short level, you'd want it to disrespect it, then retap and get your longs because that's what your bias is, right? So this is usually derived from observing the balance of buying and selling activity and the aggressiveness of market participants. You want to see how aggressive the market participants are because if they're just passive buying, then maybe that passive buying isn't as strong as you think as you would like it to be. And then you want to look at the structure of the orders. So you want to know, so you, you would obviously want to know, of course, when your bias will end or be wrong for certain factors. That's when you recreate your bias. So, for example, let's say your main objective is price filling a single print on TPO. Then after that, you need to create a new thesis slash bias, right? You can't just keep on saying, I want longs, longs, when there's a single print at the top and it's already been filled. That means now you need to look at where price has been. You want to look at current business. That's the main thing as well with when you create thesis slash bias using AMT logic. You, there's like, I'll show you this, right? This is how I formed this bias. So I wanted shorts. And the reason why I wanted shorts is because my main objectives that I use are single prints. And I want the single print to be fully filled. We were in this balance. We sort of dipped out, dipped out, dipped out. Uh, we dipped out about three times. And I could see, okay, the only full, like, known objective I have, right, is the single print being filled. And then why do I draw like this blue box? Because this is a composite. I mean, this is a merged TPO. There's like, I think, two TPOs in this or three maybe. And I just merged them because they were aligning. And I formed a, I made a box to show where balance is. And now, you, for example, right, people would be looking at like here, like here. This isn't current business. You want to look at where business is right now, where price is trading right now. Because if we're like, you know, you've seen like, a couple of days ago when trump announced tariffs on china and we dumped 100 points and now we went from all-time highs to dump dumping down 100 points and there's so many tpos right and you don't know what to look for you want to look at current business so look we're in balance we've dipped out we're pushing lower we have a previous balance here and we also have a single print and it's sort of aligning to this poc around here this is why i was thinking that we could probably start to like get some taps off this maybe go back into this balance area here and then we can just dump and we also have another single print here which is my second objective so my main thesis was short i only want to take short levels so when i actually go down lower scale time frames and use my volume profiles like the weekly profile or something like a shelf from the weekly profile i want all the composite shelves i want to see right it aligning with my bias i don't want to take random levels or like every single level that isn't aligned with amt and with my bias so in this example we can see that th this is when um trump announced the tariffs and we dropped 100 points obviously you can see that i th i was right it filled the single print and it filled this single print as well but it dumped so heavily down, right? Now you know, okay, I need to switch up my bias because there's other things to do right now because we need to look at current business. People would be looking at all of these balances that were days ago, months ago. Okay, I drew them out just so I could like get some sort of reference points, but you want to look at where price is right now. We were in a balance here and there's two single prints that have been formed from this huge spike. Obviously, in this case, we dropped 100 points, so the usual spike rules wouldn't really apply here, but you can still use it. 
and then here I had a really strong composite shelf level and I wanted to see if price could go, go up there get out of balance probably go into this balance here and then probably start to push lower and then take out this single print here and then we can probably push higher again okay this is a new concept that I've made and I call it the IOD the imbalance order displacement so the way you can know so you know I don't know if you've seen it when you guys make a bias on TPO and your objective for example is this balance area like this co this cluster of balance you want price to go to this cluster of balance there's so much balance right here you want price to go up there when an imbalance would probably go down to the balance probably use the park as support and push higher we want and we got two single prints in the way we want them to get filled and while it's getting filled we want them to reject or feel and then probably re-accept the but then look at ym right we have this sort of cluster of balance but what has price done it's already filled the single print and it's already in the prior balance so now we could probably put start to push lower so what iod's are the imbalance order displacements is that you want to see an imbalance between the orders between correlated assets so for example ym we've already hit the cluster of balance like we've hit for example this balance right here we'd probably want to see a rejection in terms of in terms of amt logic unless we do accept and then if we do accept then we'll expect es to accept right here and it'll probably accept below the single print here and it wouldn't go up to our main objective that's when you have to switch your bias again and then i have something called rfz's right so it's a reactive fill zone so this is more to do with single prints so on for example ym if price has filled a single print already on ym and my objective was these two single prints and we also hit this previous balance and if we like let's say push a bit higher and we hit like these cluster of balances we'll probably start to move lower or we'll accept right and then right here we're in the middle of this like range we're like around the middle of this range so i want to now you have to change your bias we'd either probably go back down and probably go into this um f this is a five day by the way so a five day balance and we just like re-accept into this balance or we can just um displace lower and then we re-tap into this balance here and then we push lower in terms of amt logic like this something like that i guess So that's all reactive fill zones are. It's so you can also use NQ by the way because they're all correlated assets. But I found that YM with single pins are a bit more accurate with reactive fill zones. So you want price to fill a zone, right? Such as a single print and or excess. It, it can apply to excess as well. Remember that. So it's excess or it's single prints. So once one correlated asset has filled a single print or an excess then es will probably react a bit stronger the reason why es will react stronger is because ym has already filled the single print es becomes the weaker asset in this case now so now it will have a harder dump if if ym starts to dump and let's say ym dumps like about 40 points es will dump maybe double that maybe 80 points or maybe like 50 points like a bit more than ym because it becomes the weaker asset because it hasn't filled these single prints so then when we go back up it'll slowly go back up compared to ym when ym will move probably faster because these single prints are still here okay now the main thing is right is that you want to collect data on your thesis because how are you going to improve your thesis every single day when you do your th daily thesis is when you do your biases when you use the iod or rfz uh, concepts th things like that right i found those concepts from collecting data from my thesis so i'm going to make at the end of this like mini series like these codes I'm going to make a like sort of software where you can collect and journal your trades and it'll show like graphs and things like that and how you can improve it and there'll be tips. But for now, you guys can just like just do simple things like are you long, short or neutral or like balancing or whatever. Um, what When does this like start or end? Like let's say it's a weekly bias. So it starts on Monday and ends on Friday, for example. And then where does it end like how like where does it con be considered like valid like for example here i want shorts but if price starts to push higher and goes above this red shelf this composite shelf and we probably like go up here and then we 
like you know re-tap and push higher and we try to get this then my bias would switch to shorts right so you don't want to you don't want to be married to one bias you want to you know change your biases as you go along um yeah and then you can do like a confidence scale you can see why, why is your reason you should write down your reason um you can look at where your um like let's say you enter a trade right and lower time frame you're bearish but higher like overall context with amt and things like that you're bullish and let's say you enter shorts and if you lose and you you can like sort of put in a graph and you can see um do you get more do you get more money more profit when you enter trades with your bias or trades without your bias right and then you want to count your wins losses things like that when your bias was active you want to look at your average win rate your average you know or or you want to look at your ev so you want to see the computed value of it um then i'll then you want to look at the profit factor for each bias that you've done then you want to look at was your bias changed if yes if no so if it was yes then you need to change it you need to see the reason why it was changed things like that then obviously in this example right these shorts that dumped 100 points because of trump talking about china tariffs that's when you can add a news tag and you can just say in that news tag that you know trump spoke this is right why my bias was invalid or why i went too quickly for my bias because i did want shorts but it obviously ran more than i wanted to so that just shows that you need to account news as well you need to account some sort of fundamentals you need to look at forex factory you need to look at news and then you know you can look at your exit breaches your missed rules and then you obviously have to think about your missed rules like i didn't enter on any biases for the last five trades and you, and they were losses so you can see like why bias is important things like that so after all of these videos i'll make a notion or i'll make like some sort of software where you can collect all of your order flow data and it'll show you like how to improve your stats okay the ethos codex right the codex will be in the next slide it'll just be like a cheat sheet with like all the statistics for a tpo but i'll just show you one of my favorite examples right that i use mainly so let's say you have a eth profile right here and it looks like something like this and then let's say you have a rth profile something like this all right so we have an eth profile we have an rth profile there are data points on TPOs, which you know, which are, for example, POC, you know, value area high, value area low, the TPO high, the TPO low. And then obviously here we got the TPO low, let me do that in green, so TPO low and TPO high. So for example, let's say price opens on the RTH timing and we open here. And price, so look, there is a percentage chance that price will either hit the TPO low or the TPO high of the ETH TPOs. Because guess what? These data points, you can actually have statistics in order, in order to know which one's going to be hit. So in this case, there is an above 90% chance of price hitting either the TPO high or the TPO low of ETH. So in this example, right, there's a 90% chance price will either hit this low, the TPO low, or the TPO high, right? And then when this happens, so now you know, right, that, okay, let's say price hits the TPO high, that's a 90% chance of happening. When price hits that TPO high, that means price will create a trend in that area, it will create a reversal, it will create, you know, expansion, it will create exception and a balance, things like that you have to consider. And but you don't want to use these statistics as entries. So let's say we're like five points away from TPO low, and it's a ninety percent chance of hitting the TPO low or high, and it's very close to the TPO low. So people might enter shorts. You do not want to enter shorts because there is still about ten percent chance, or like five percent chance of price reversing on you, and you're getting liquidated. Because you don't want to use these statistics as a edge because when once you do once you add so many statistics to your edge there's going to be so many that you know you can just use an algo right to like do this but like we're using discretionary trading we want to form our bias with our tpo you want to build these contexts right with these statistics so let's say a pri price is going down you have a long level but guess what 
it's about five points away from the TPO low. And there's obviously over a 90% chance of hitting that TPO low. So what would you do? Would you rather wait for that TPO to get mitigated or would you rather not wait for it to like you know get raided or you would just enter those longs obviously you wouldn't want to enter those longs you're fighting against 90 percent statistic right so you would wait for price to take that tpo low maybe you miss something in your bias you want to go check them maybe there's like a previous balance poc at that tpo low overnight then you want to think okay it took the tpo low now and I was going into longs like five points up and it would have liquidated me. Now you want to look for your long level. Now you want to look for the shelf or wherever you enter on lower time frame with the volume profiles, like your levels. And then you enter. And then you can, and let, let's say TPO high hasn't been taken yet. So what is the chance of price taking the TPO low and then taking the TPO high? What is that statistical chance? So you don't want to go so much into statistics like that. You just want to use it like as a, background like in your mind when you create your thesis is when you create your biases and things like that so now i'll just show you a cheat sheet of like all the tpo statistics in one so here is where i have the codex so for example let's say you open higher outside the range right of the previous tpo so to fill an external gap half of it there's a 76 percent chance it will fill half of the gap and for example like let's say um opening overnight right the vpoc so this is the volume poc right so there's an 83 percent chance of hitting that and then look hitting the overnight high or low it's around a 94 percent chance of hitting either the high or the low so you can technically so price will have to create a trend right when it takes the high or low so that will help you dictate your statistics and things like that and you can just collect these statistics another thing is with your when you collect when you journal right in order flow when you like for example see okay every time i enter long when my bias is long it's not working out what do i do to improve it you let's say i don't know add better amt logic you add a bit more advanced amt logic or you just add something that's better right you need to first have a good amount of trades that's been collected with that change because you don't want to change every single thing every single start because if you change every single start you don't know which star actually helps you that's what a lot of beginner trades traders do because they have let's say trash results because they're a beginner trader and they just made the edge with order flow and then when they see in their journal that okay the trash are bias the trash are entry the trash are the risk of management you don't want to change all of it at once you want to change one variable you want to add maybe a new confluence and you want to see if it's changed you want to see in the next 10 15 trades has it improved your ev has it cha has it changed your like overall expectancy if it hasn't then maybe drop the confluence maybe add something else and try to only improve one and see if that overall improves your edge because you don't want to improve every single thing that is it of the first code of how to create your thesis slash bias and i'll put the ethos codex in the description in the notion and everything else i've said in this video obviously you guys can obviously use a lot of these like that cheat sheet where i showed about the codex and you can you know see, see these percentages but you don't want to be a you don't want to go too deep into the percentages because if you go too deep into the statistics you're going to make very very small changes to your strat it wouldn't really help with this strat it's just going to over complicate it and it's just going to make it very complicated with all of these statistics that you're looking at on your piece of paper i don't really look at the codex i don't really look at the codex right it's sort of like a cheat sheet so i don't look at the cheat sheet i just I leave in the back of my mind that I only use like maybe two or three statistics that help me like the overnight high or low that's helped me with my trading. There's other statistics from the codex that can help you but you have to remember you only add one you want to see if there's been a change over a course of trades you don't want to add so many changes to so many variables which you don't even know which ones actually helped it do you see what I'm saying so that's what you want to do anyways join the discord DM me let me know if you guys have any other questions